And welcome to Glitch 2600. Who am I? Well, my name is Brian, aka Glitch. I'm your friendly, you know, host, guest, you know, friend on all things geekery when it comes to computer science, computer security, you know, Mac, PC, video, and photography. If it's a geek term, I can probably help you with it. And if it's electronics, definitely. <laughs> what are you here for? Well, hopefully you're here for our Glitch Bites as part of Vlogmas 2020. What is Vlogmas 2020 first? Well, this is day eight of it. So if you go back to our day one episode, you'll see where we talk about it, but it's just a good way for us content creators to go live every day in December and kind of push our, our capabilities forward and get a little bit better each time. And bring something new for you. I've been talking about doing these glitch bites for a long time, and uh, that was a good way to propel me to do it. And what is a glitch bite? Well, a glitch bite is just a tip. So it's normally 10 minutes or less, and it can be bite-sized. It's a tip that doesn't bite, hopefully, but it's bite-sized for you to enjoy. Our longer ones are kind of those megabytes, terabytes, where we deep dive into it, but most of the time, these are gonna be those short 10-minute type uh, tips. We also have our geek outs that you can join on where we do live Q&A and you can jump on and ask any geek question, computer, photography, or video, and we will do our best to answer them. And if we don't know the answer, we will track it down for you. Just keep an eye out on the channel and you can see that. Um, speaking of the channel, if you are on YouTube, we would love for you to come join us on Facebook. That's just go look up at glitch 2600. You can subscribe there. Otherwise, if you are on Facebook, please, please, please go to this link below live.glitch2600.com slash YouTube or hover your phone over that uh, little QR code over there. And it'll ask if you want to open up the link and then subscribe. Please go ahead and subscribe and then click the, uh, the bell to be notified. Then you'll know when these tips are coming. And if you have friends that need these types of tips, you know, welcome them too and send that along. But having said that, let's get into our glitch bite. Today we're going to talk about optimizing your Mac and speeding it up and unlocking features using a piece of software that's free called Onyx. Now there are other pieces of software out there that are equally good. There's Clean My Mac. There's a lot of tech tool ones out there. Um, a long time ago I even liked uh, Disk Keeper. Um, unfortunately it doesn't do much with the current uh, operating systems because of their disk format, but you can use it on older or to clean up external drives. But having said that, let's switch over and do a little screen share to show you about Onyx. So I'll show you where you can get Onyx. Let's, in fact, let's go ahead and switch over to that first. But if we go over here, you can go to titanium software or titanium-software.fr, you know, English and Onyx, or if you just do a search in Google for Onyx space for Mac, they have different ones for specific OS's. So having said that, you know, you can see you just have to get it for your version of Mac OS, which you can find in, under the Apple and about this Mac. And you download the version for yours. Uh, Big Sur version is coming out within the next couple weeks. So having said that, let's switch back to Onyx and talk on there. <clears throat> Onyx is an amazingly good tool and it's free. You know, what's better than that? Free is always good, you know, for this part. You know, free does not mean has viruses or anything like that in this case. This is a something I've sworn by for a long time. So when you come into it, it'll ask for your credentials and to log in um, to unlock the disk for the software to read. It's not sending that anywhere. It's not anything like that. I've tested it. I've run it through its paces, uh, and it doesn't go out and hit anything weird on my firewall or anything like that. When you come in, you have a few tabs across the top. You have a maintenance, utilities, files, and parameters. What's cool with utilities, if we show that, you'll see where you have your stuff to make more room by optimizing your storage. Turn on and off screen sharing if you'd like. Launch the network utility, wireless diagnostics, directory utility to, if you have, if you tie this into Active Directory or have something like that. You can also Close down and see your running processes. You can turn that on and see which processes are running if you're more technical. 
your your computer has a bunch of built-in manuals. It's built on Unix slash Linux. So because of that, there's a bunch of these man pages that you can bring up and see if you know those tools or if you're able to use terminal. This will come clean up your uh, time shot or your time machine screenshots if you want. You can create a new uh, snapshot if you use time machine. For your file system, you can do a file system check on it. One of my favorite features under files is where you can come in here and erase. You can securely erase. See, yeah, there's delete. So you can erase a folder, erase a file, or you can securely delete. That means it makes three passes and make sure that file's gone. So if you have something that you feel that sensitive on, that's a really nice feature. Obviously, you can turn on visibility on disk, hide and show. You can hide and show folders if you want to, you know, there's a hidden library one you can turn on, but you can hide ones in there. And that will just turn on that hidden uh, checksum without you needing to go into terminal and know how to do that. And a lot of these things have that same type of stuff through it. The more advanced you are, you probably know these. Even under parameters, it'll read the parameters of the system. Of course, it's going to take a second to launch now. It launched up super fast earlier, but now that I'm on here, you can change how different pieces, you know, show your login. You know, do you want to change your, your screen on that one? Do you want to show a list of local administrators, network users, change your startup mode, change, turn on or off the startup sound? You can change how the dock interacts without having to jump around throughout different systems in different spots. You know, you can change the icon size, where it comes. I mean, these are pretty self-explanatory and the info goes into pretty good depth. Um, I really like some of the finder ones where you can say, hey, hide my desktop icons if I wanted to, or hide hidden folders, or show them. Not just by going one-to-one, -one, I can go all the way through. Um, or kill out those start and restart um, menu items. So there's a lot of, lot of really cool uh, checkboxes you can go in here and mess around with if you need to, if there's a little annoyance in your operating system. You know, this will tell you how to go select your, your system. Which, what's your default screen capture type? You can switch that and make that the new default. Uh, the speed of displaying sheets. Uh, even the, the graphic effects when you open a window where it does that kind of genie effect, you can turn those on or off in your last, how many recent places in your last save. Maybe you want to have the last eight of them show up. So as you can see, there's a lot of little things on there that you can turn there. But what I want you to, to know, this is where you can turn anything on and off. This is where you can turn off the gatekeeper. That's the uh, security system for it. <clears throat> when you get new apps, that part you might not want to turn off. But if you're having trouble with an app installing, that's one thing you can mess around with. Uh, app nap is just when it, it puts a, an app to sleep. So like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can do there for one-offs. But I want you to focus on this maintenance tab. This is where we're going to get the most bang for our buck right now. And that's where you can verify the structure of your file system. And this will just run through a set of automated tasks. So you'll see down here where it says that. What I tend to like to check is this. I want to verify the structure of my file system because a lot of times if I'm having trouble with my Mac or if it's being slow or I'm having trouble installing stuff, that's normally where the problem is. Um, you can, if you use Time Machine, I don't really use Time Machine. I use a service called Backblaze. But if I did, this is where I could check that. Um, I always leave rebuilding the services database, that's the backend system, the shared cache, spotlight cache. If you use a lot of searching on there, that cache can get pretty big. I like to check that. I don't really use the mail app, so I normally have this unchecked, but if you use the mail app, this will speed up your mail when you search. That's rebuilding that index. What I don't check is the disk positions on the desktop. I keep my cons and stuff where I want them on the desktop, so I don't want it to move those around. So I uncheck that, you know, so just to show. System cleaning, it checks the system, you know, logs and caches, application logs and caches, general log messages and reports. You're probably not going in there, so it's good to have those clear out. You can also have it do your internet, which if you go in there, you can choose lots of different stuff. Cups jobs means internet printing. So if you did some internet printing through it, it could be stuck in a cups job. So it's good to check that. Um, pretty much most of this, the saved application states, uh, where you were at in which application. 
Um, I like to uncheck that because I like it to keep where I'm at. I don't want to lose that. Um, Java and Java applets I turned off because my, my uh, lab that I use for my photography uses Java applets. And so that, a lot of times that would knock that out. So I leave those off uh, from there from what it's pulling. Um, audio plugins. We'll skip down. These are all the other logs that I can kill out in restored sessions. But if I turned on the internet one, let's go ahead and check this box now. You'll see when I turn that on, I get all these options where I can clear the DNS cache. That's really good. Browser cache also can be really good because it's just what's been cached down. So the next time you go to a web page, if it's acting up, this will cause it to re-download it. Now my download cache, I don't clear because I keep some stuff in my downloads. I should clear them out, but I don't. So that's a personal preference. I also don't clear my browser history very often because I like I go back for my history. You could tell it to clear out your bookmark icons, form values. Cookies and other site data is good to clear out from time to time, but that will cause you to have to re-sign in on any pages where it's in there. And as a security guy, that's good, but as a functionality, unless you have something like one password to fill in, can be a pain in the butt for you. Items in your mail downloads and instant messaging conversations, you can tell it to go through and clear. These are all kind of personal preferences, but that gives you an idea. So if I were to click OK there, you'll see that's checked. One thing you definitely, definitely, definitely want checked is this maintenance scripts. You probably don't leave your Mac up all the time or you let it go to sleep, and there's certain maintenance that it runs daily, weekly, and monthly. It's a little script in the background. This makes sure those get ran at this time. So you want that checked. Also, there's a fonts cache. So it has its own font book. I use another thing called Font Agent Pro, but this will go through and clear out any activated fonts and allow you to reactivate them as you need them. Junk items, same type of thing, stuff that gets marked as junk. This will clear out your recent items cache, which will be everywhere, and this will empty your trash. So if you store stuff in your trash, don't check that. Otherwise, this is the general setup that I like to have checked all the time for me. And then if I hit run task, right now if I do it, it'll slow down the machine and stop stuff, which we don't want to do. So I will run this later myself, and it will ask to reboot. And that's good. Go ahead and let it reboot. It's done, and you'll notice that a lot of things are a lot faster. So having said that, and your first boot might be a little slower as it rebuilds, but then everything will speed up from there. So hopefully that answers your questions on there. We went a little longer than normal because I was really one to, to cover that. But having said that, if you have questions, more questions, we'll have another tip tomorrow. I've got a bunch of stuff in the works, um, but we'd love to cover more things that interest you. So make sure to say, you know, type a question, let us know on any of those channels, and we'll try to work it in. If there's something that concerns you or something you are having an annoyance with, let us know. We'll make a glitch bit slash tip for you. But we also have been covering our beer and our craft beer, so why not? cover day eight of our craft beer. I've been a big fan of the Iowa craft beer scene, so I'm just showing I've got my Iowa craft beer advent calendar. And so if you join us for our happy hours where we geek out on all things craft beer, these are some of the beers that are gonna make it in there. And you can find that when we launch them up. And I'm hoping to have a, a date picked for this week's one. We might do two um, later today, maybe tomorrow. And so you'll be able to see that if you're subscribed on any of our channels. But let's open day eight and see what it is. I gotta find eight on the, the calendar here. Pop it open without seeing too much. And they always put them so small down in there. I gotta get tongs or my small, hopefully small hand down in here. But having said that, ooh, from Mistress Brewing. If we can get that to focus. Mistress Brewing in Ankeny, Iowa. We have Mistress Daily, or Daisy, which is a uh, American ale. As you can see on there, it's an ABV of 7% and 12 IBU. I'm not a big fan of, of IBU, but we'll talk about this one. It's had a, a Ankeny has always had a tradition of driveway drinking. Folks get off work, grab their lawn chairs and grab their coolers to the drive, or drag their coolers to the driveway and drink and socialize with their neighbors. We dedicate this beer to those driveway drinkers, whether you live on a cul-de-sac, a dead end, or a desolate roundabout. And it talks a little bit more about it, but we'll talk about that on the beer show. But here's a pre, uh, 
for all you guys who join me for the the glitch bite you guys get a preview of what's going to be on the uh happy hour so thanks for joining please catch us tomorrow share to your friends who might find these tips or look at our other tips and you know if they if you think that might be helpful for them please share we just want to help out and uh thanks for coming along we'll talk to you tomorrow